So welcome everybody to this Microsoft 365 feature demo show. I don't know what we call the show. It doesn't really matter, um, but we go through all of the different features uh, in the Microsoft 365, Viva, SharePoint, all of that stuff. And this time, and we're going to focus on uh, cool features and capabilities within the Microsoft Viva, uh, and specifically in Viva Connections. So with me here uh, is Leslie Thomas. Leslie, can you do a quick intro as we are? Hi, everybody. My name is Leslie Thomas. I am a product manager working on Viva Connections. Happy to be here uh, demoing for you all once again. And I'm going to be demoing the new Spotlight settings feature that we've been working on. Now, for those, before we go to the live demo, can we do a quick recap? What is a Spotlight demo? What, what a Spotlight of what? What are we talking? Yeah, absolutely. So for those who have been keeping up with the work that Viva Connections has been doing, we have been revamping the Viva Connections desktop experience for quite a bit, coming out with some, some new components on the uh, Viva Connections experience. One of the components that you see at near the top is the spotlight component. And that is a component that highlights all the news that comes from your, share, from your SharePoint home site all the way into connections. So it's a good way to kind of like broadcast any relevant news that you want your organization to see. And it shows it directly on top of the connections experience. Cool. Cool. OK, so that's a good clarification. But I think it's the easiest way to, to understand how this works. Let's jump on the live demo and let's have a look on how what are the new settings and what are the new options. So let me flip the mode a bit. And there we go. Whoa, we are good to go. So what, uh, uh, let's get started on the, on the demo side. Yeah, absolutely. So first, I want to highlight that, um, as you can see, this interface looks a little bit different. And what I mean by that is we're currently using the web experience of Viva Connections. So yes, the team has been working on making Viva Connections available on the web. So I'm going to use this demo to kind of show what the Spotlight Settings experience will look like using the web-based version of Viva Connections. We are in a process of rolling it out, but expect for it to be available very, very soon. Cool. Cool. And of course, the experience is exactly the same inside of Microsoft Teams. So it doesn't really matter which way you access the Viva Connection through the browser directly or through Microsoft Teams, right? Yep. So the experience is just is exactly the same that you would see in Teams. It's just you now have a web-based entry point to access the experience. Cool. Cool. Really good. Really good. Now, uh, and the header section here is then the spotlight. And that's the term for the news, right? So what are, what are, what's the new thing here? I can say the setting buttons, uh, at least. Yeah, absolutely. So just to kind of clarify, so just to provide a visual what the spotlight section is. So here's the spotlight here near the top of the connection experience. And any news that's rendered from your home site will populate here, making it very visible to your end users. So the first version of this did not have settings. So all the news that you generated on your home site will show up here, but the operators did not have any control over that. Um, if they want to change what type of news appears or the order that it appears, basically it goes in the order that is ranked on the home site. So the new settings panel gives you more control on how you want to set up what appears on your spotlight. So I'll walk through some of the new section that we have here and do a demo of each. So we have two sections here. One is pinned items and one is SharePoint news. For those who've used the news web part in SharePoint, you probably, this probably looks a bit familiar to you. We've definitely taken some patterns from there to incorporate this into the settings, uh, spotlight settings property pane here. But the new section pin items actually allow you to pin any URL onto your Spotlight component. So it could be internal URLs, so their SharePoint news that you want to make visible, or it could be any external source. So it does also have to be news. It could be whatever URL you choose to put here. So I'm going to do an example of what that looks like. Um, we're going to first pin an item. As you can see, I have three pin items here. And as you can see, it shows up first. So any item that you pin will be prioritized over anything that be, will be dynamically generated afterwards, which I'll explain in a bit. Cool. So I'm going to start with pin item. So once you click on that, um, it takes you to a different property pane that allows you to pin an item. So here I've already have a couple of links set in handy. So we'll just start with this one, um, something from Microsoft News. So once you paste the link here, it'll validate the link. And then from there, it'll automatically generate a title and preview image. You have the ability to modify these to, to your liking. So if you want a customized title or if you want a specific image for the URL that you want to populate, you can do that. 
You also have the ability to generate alternative text. So if you have people with disabilities, they use screen readers, they can be able to understand what the image is conveying while they're communicating with, with the um, URL. So we'll just keep everything the same for the sake of the demo. So we're gonna press add here. So once you see here, it has added to the pin item section. You can pin up to 11 items and it'll definitely show you how many items you have left once you start pinning. It won't save right away once you add it. So you get to kind of see the order in which it shows. It won't show here until you save, but you are able to see the order in which it shows up um, once doing so. So I'm going to save it. And once I save it, the property pane closes. But once I go to the fourth one, as you can see here, this is the article that we added. It has the same title. It also has the same image and it'll show quite quickly on your spotlight component. Yep. So let's say that we want to modify the order a bit. So we'll go back to settings and let's say that this particular article, um, article you want to make it number one instead of number four. So we do have a ton of cap um, editing capabilities on Spotlight that allows you to kind of configure the order that you like it to be. So in this case, we will drag and drop it and move it to one. Um, we also have the ability to reorder in a different way as well. So drag and drop is not the capability that works for you, or maybe you are someone with disability or someone that use key uh, keyboard navigation. You also have the ability to use reordering here. So just yep. kind of idea how that works. Um, if you want to reorder it to the second or third or fourth, you can do that in update as we please. But we'll cool. use the drag and, dra drag and drop for now. So we moved it to one. Um, it won't show here just yet, but once we save, the pen item that we moved to four now, as you can see, is the first one here. So let's say that you want to put in a different article. So maybe you had this article on your spotlight for a while, and maybe you want to switch it to something new for your users. So we do have the ability to edit existing pin items. So we'll start doing that here. So click edit items. So as you remember, um, these automatically populated. So we're going to add a different link here. And I have a second link available that we can use here. So we'll copy that. We'll remove that. Paste. And as you can see, uh, same flow applies, automatically generates the title, preview image that you can change both at any time, as well as the alternative text. So we'll press update here. So as mentioned earlier, it won't update right away because you'll still have to save it. But you can see that on the property pane, it did show the new article that we want to generate here. So yeah. we'll press save. A lot of settings. This is, this, we're kidding. We are really empowering the, the configure, what, what are these operators in the Viva connection to adjust what's visible. This is really good. So, yeah, absolutely. And with Spotlight being such a, such a visible component on the connection experience, we want to give the operators the ability to kind of curate what they want this particular section to look like. Yep. And this could definitely be helpful for companies that have like specific content that they want to show in a particular order and they now have more of the liberty to do so with the pin items. Yeah. So let's say that you had this item up for a while and maybe it's no longer applicable. So we also have the ability to remove an item. So simply put, you just select remove item. It disappears. It won't disappear yet until you save. So we'll select save here. Once you select save, the item that we recently added and edited has disappeared. So. That's how pen items work. Again, you can upload up to, um, add up to 11 pen items. And then from there, since there is 11 slots, once you reach all 11, you will no longer be able to pen unless you remove. Now, before we go to the news, I'm gonna take a teaser question on the news as well. So I can see that there's a up to 11 slots. Uh, now, the are uh, the extra slots then about the news? on the top of those trees or how does that work? How do you how do you set up the, if you put three there, then the eight slots will be for news or how does that work? Yeah, absolutely, great question. So let's say that you've pinned a couple of items here and you have some remaining slots left. The remaining slots will then dynamically generate any SharePoint news that you have from your site source, your news source here. So let's say that you configure a lot of news on your SharePoint home site, for an example but you also have three pin items on your spotlight. The remaining eight items will show 
the news that appear on your home site and will fill the remaining slots. So it'll either fill, it'll either fill up all eight or it'll fill up however many news items you have. So in this case, if you only have three and there's three pin items, then from there you will have extra slots open if you want to pin any additional items. Yeah. Since it didn't fill up the entire slot. Makes sense. Cool. Awesome. So next we're going to move to the SharePoint news section. So many of you may have also recognized this UI from the news web part. Again, we did use the news web part as some inspiration while putting this together, just to kind of put a familiar pattern for those who have already configured this on their home site. So we have two news sources that you can do. One is this site and one is select sites. So on this site is the default experience. And this site is simply just your default home site. So any news that's being generated from there, since it's already set up that way, it'll automatically have news flowing from it if you have any open um, slots available on Spotlight. So for an example here, now we have three pin items and the rest shows um, just item that's coming from your SharePoint, um, from your home site. So let's say that we wanted to switch it to select sites. So select sites give you an opportunity to select more than one site source um, to generate news on your spotlight. So you can select as many sources as you want, and it will populate news from those different sources. And we, we have a ranking system that will factor in different type of configurations, such as when the news post was, uh, when it was posted, if it was boosted, audience targeting, factors in all of that to determine the order of there. So we, we already have a select site. So for the sake of demo, we'll just do one. Um, and we want to add one from for Leadership Corner in particular. So we don't want to add this site. Maybe we was like, OK, we want to put it for Leadership Corner in particular. This site has one news post. So um, once we save, it won't show yet, even though we select a radio button. But once we save, as you can see, it'll still show the three pin items that we have. But one thing that you notice is that the news source uh, generate content that's specific to Leadership Corner compared yep. to the original source that we had originally, which was Summit Demo. So you do have the ability, if you want to make both a new source, you can just select both. Um, but in this case, we'll go and switch back to the to the home site. So once you do that, again, with everything else that we've done, it won't switch right away unless you press Save. So right now, Leadership Corner has one news post. I'm going to press Save here. And as you can see, right away, it goes back to the new sources that was generated from the home site. So that was selected as default source. Yeah. Super logical, makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Really, really cool. Absolutely. So this is the extent of the demo. Um, I say it's, it's, a, it's a pretty straightforward experience, especially if you had a chance to use the web part before. For those, yeah. if this is your first time using something like this, we want to make it as simple as possible to be able to configure your spotlight settings, just so you can have more control of how the news show up, when the news show up, um, and also um, address any stale content that you may have to keep your spotlight fresh. So yep. we hope that you love this and please give us any feedback on the experience as you try it out and let us know how we can make the experience better for you as you continue on your journey of configuring spotlight. Cool. I will do a few questions uh, before we close up, which I can imagine that somebody who's watching the video will be asking. So just addressing those. Number Absolutely. one question, which is completely outside of our script. Uh, we didn't talk about it. Why 11? Why not 10 or 12? Yeah, absolutely. Like, Great is, question. Is, is, it a, is it a stranger thing reference? So just <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, we just wanted to start out with 11. Um, we're definitely okay. not married to the number 11. We're definitely open to expanding it if we continue to hear feedback from, from our customers, if they think more is better. So we just wanted to start out with 11 kind of as a starter framework to give oh. enough slots to have a variety of options for the operators to configure, but we're definitely open to feedback if we feel like 11 is either too much or too little. Yep, absolutely makes sense. And it's max 11, of course, if you have less, then it's showing only then there's there's no hidden slots behind of the things. Now, uh, and then Leslie, and what about the future? We, this spring has been, there's been so many cool features in the Vivo connection, which I, definitely love uh, because it's providing so much more maturity for the whole product. Uh, are we going to continue the pipeline of new features, new features, new features? I know the answer for this one, but uh, I'll let you <laughs> actually talk about it as well. Absolutely. So the answer is yes, yes, yes. Uh, the Viva Connections team has been heads down 
working on a lot of new features to continue to allow you to maximize the effectiveness of your experience, allow for more control, and also continuing to provide more value to your customers based on what they've been experiencing. So more, yeah. cust so more customization, as you recently know, we came out with dashboard personalization for your connections experience for the end users. So we're just constantly thinking of ways to make the connections feel more, more in line with, with your personal brand and make it more tailored to you as an operator and how you configure it, and also more tailored as a user interacting with connections. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, and, and of course, super, super important thing, which I said it already, but just a reminder for everybody who's watching the video, please, please, please provide us feedback and input uh, because we build all of these experiences for our customers based on their requests and, and feedback what they're providing. So super, super critical for us as well. But I guess that sums up the, the video and a demo. So thank you, Leslie, joining on the video. Really cool to have you here um, and the showcase and really awesome to see this great feature uh, to be available as well. Yeah, absolutely. Always a pleasure being being here and thank you for having me. Thanks, Lexi. Cheers. All right, thank you.